If we can, Adolfo Birch, again, is the NFL's Senior VP of Labor Policy, and he joins us on the Subway Fresh Take Hotline. Adolfo, welcome back, Mike. And Mike, how are you this morning? How are you? I'm good to good having a good day. Good. Uh, well, let's start with the most basic question. How did you and the others involved in the decision-making process arrive at two games suspension for Ray Rice? Well, I, I think the, the, the way we did that is the way that uh, – we determine discipline in all of these types of cases, and that is the commissioner uh, elicits a number of perspectives. Uh, he doesn't sit in a vacuum uh, when he's making these types of decisions, but instead consults with people, listens to the perspectives of uh, the Players Association and others uh, at the league office, uh, and ultimately makes a decision that he thinks is appropriate based on both the conduct uh, and uh, the the importance of uh, making the the right message to the for the league and uh, and others going forward. Were were you were you one of the people that he talked to about this? Yes. And, and you felt two games was was justified. Well, I, I believe that the discipline uh, the NFL took. I think if you if you look at it, uh, you know it, the the discipline that was taken by the NFL is the only discipline that occurred with respect to Mr. Rice in this case. Uh, and, I, you know, I think that were he not an NFL player, uh, I don't know that he would have received any punishment from any other source. And so uh, on balance, uh, when we reviewed all the materials, uh, the information, listened to the, the, the persons that we listened to, took the input of the Players Association, uh, when we looked on balance at all of that, we believe that the, the discipline that we issued is appropriate. I mean, it is, you know, multiple games uh, and hundreds of thousands of dollars. I think that uh, it's fair to say that you, that's, that doesn't reflect that you condone the behavior. I think we can put that to rest. Well, I, I think that there are many who would respectfully disagree on this, Adolfo. Before we get to that, there's one more informational point that we must get to, and that is, has the National Football League and has the commissioner, do, is, does he have a, a information that others do not? I guess most specifically, has he seen further video footage of anything that happened in that elevator that the general public has not seen? Well, listen, I, I understand everybody's desire to, to know uh, the, the sort of details of what was reviewed, who we talked to, et cetera. But I think you have to understand that there is a certain level of privacy that should be accorded both to the process and to the persons involved. And uh, I think it is important for us to respect that in this case. As I well. understand that, and that's fair. But is it, I guess one specific question would be, did he see any other video? There are many who have speculated that there were things on that video that are extremely disturbing. We've not seen it. Has the commissioner seen it? Uh, again, I, I, as I said, what we look at, who we talk to, those things I think should be afforded a level of privacy that, that we think is appropriate. And, you know, it, it, our opinion is based on the fact of, of those that we know that saw this tape. And I understand you not wanting to say what, what was on that tape. But all uh, is from my opinion is if I didn't hit somebody and I was accused of it, I'd be yelling it from the mountaintop. And Ray Rice hasn't done that. So, Adolfo, I have to say, you know, Roger Goodell and the NFL's job is to protect the, protect the shield. Can you understand why people have said the shield has taken a dent because a man hit a woman and was only suspended two games for it. Well, I, you know, look, I think I think the shield, uh, as you call it, is always an issue, and it happens when there's conduct. Uh, I think the league's response to it demonstrates that we don't condone the behavior, and that uh, we expect our players, our coaches, our staff, anyone associated with the league, not to behave that way. And again, I, I would have to tell you that uh, suspending someone for multiple games, costing them hundreds of thousands of dollars, does not reflect in any way uh, that you would condone the behavior that was uh, being done. And, and again, it, it, it is the only discipline to have come out of this incident. The came same from the NFL. Adolfo Birch is with the senior VP of labor policy for the NFL. The same could be said of Ben Roethlisberger. There was no further discipline. He received a six-game suspension, which was subsequently uh, lowered to four on, on, on the, the basis of, for lack of a better way of putting it, good behavior. Why was this markedly less than Roethlisberger? Well, I think, you know, the situations were very different. We explained at the time uh, with, uh, Ben's uh, suspension 
the bases behind that, just as we've explained in this instance, the, the bases behind uh, Mr. Rice's uh, suspension. Uh, again, I don't think it, it is uh, particularly appropriate to sort of weigh each case against itself on all its facts. But there were reasons that, with Roethlisberger that we felt a, a more uh, lengthy suspension was appropriate, and we laid those out at the time that we, that we made that decision. I understand that. Can you understand, Adolfo, how some people will look at this and say, in the National Football League, a player gets suspended four games for taking the wrong supplement, but only gets suspended two games for being involved in an issue with domestic violence. Can you understand where the optics of that are causing people to question how seriously the National Football League takes the matter of domestic violence? Well, I, I think that as an initial, I could understand that as an initial reaction, but I think on balance when you look at uh, the entirety of how we address issues of domestic violence, how we address issues related to uh, the integrity of our game, I think it's fair to say that we believe that they're all important, and we treat them all uh, in a way that reflects what we believe to be the values of the league, and that is to do the right thing, to avoid uh, this type of negative behavior, whatever form it comes in. Uh, I think, you know, obviously some of the things that we do uh, on the discipline side with respect to the performance-enhancing substance policy, for example, are collectively bargained, and those are the numbers that the, the league and the Players Association have agreed to. Uh, this, you know, these types of cases are not really subject to that uh, form of set penalty. So there is more uh, thought and, uh, you know, judgment that has to be employed. And in this case, this is what uh, the commissioner felt was appropriate, uh, and we support that, and the union has supported that result. As far, and I get it with the PEDs, there are X amount for, uh, for transgressions, and that's in the CBA, and completely understand that. Just so we all have knowledge of it, in a case like this that's not in the CBA, what is how far could Roger Goodell go if he wanted to go? This was a two-game suspension. How far would he be allowed to take this? Well, the, 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 the commissioner's authority in this case doesn't provide uh, for a particular ceiling on uh, what he could do. Uh, however, we are bound in large part by precedent in prior cases, uh, decisions that have been uh, heard on appeal in the past, uh, and notions of fairness and appropriateness. Uh, you know, you have to look at, at what would happen relative to, uh, you know, other leagues, other, other organizations, other entities, and determine whether or not you think the action that the commissioner took is appropriate. But, uh, you know, the, the, the reality is that we have to make decisions that are fair and consistent with both the prior case law, the prior precedent, but also the message that we need to send as a league to ensure that, that people understand the standards uh, of conduct expected of them. Adolfo Birch is the senior VP of labor policy for the NFL. Good enough to spend some time with us this morning here and explain the league's perspective on this. Can you tell us what other cases you looked at, what other comparisons were made if the use of PEDs and the punishments there are collectively bargained? That's not a good comparison. I understand that. What was a good comparison? Well, I, you know, look, the, we have had uh, domestic issues in the past. We've had those uh, you know, misconduct in that area in the past. Uh, we've had cases that uh, look at that we look at that have similar dispositions, meaning how the court has handled them. Uh, there, there are a variety of things we can review that give us some perspective on what has been done, uh, which allows us to determine what should be done. And, and you know, there, there are a number of things that we could look at historically that would help us in that respect, uh, in addition, obviously, to, to the direct discussions with uh, the Players Association and, and others uh, that would have, you know, a, a valuable perspective on that. Adolfo, I've, I've got to be honest with you. We, we are hearing from thousands of people this morning who are saying the National Football League had an opportunity to send a message that domestic violence will not be tolerated in our league and failed to do so in the Ray Rice case. What is the league's reaction? Well, it, uh, listen, I think if, if you're any player and you believe that based on this decision – that it's okay to go out and, and commit that type of conduct, I, I think I think that's that's something that I would I would I would suggest to you uh, that no player is going to go out and do that. So in terms of sending a message about what the league stands for, we've done that. 
Uh, we, can, we can talk about the, the degree of discipline. Uh, we can talk about whether or not you think third parties need to be involved. I would suggest to you that a third party has been involved in this matter, and that was the court that reviewed it, the prosecutor that reviewed it. Uh, but uh, if it's a question of what the principle of the league is and what standards we stand by, that cannot be questioned. It, I think it is absolutely clear uh, to all involved that the NFL does not condone domestic violence in any way and will not tolerate it in our league. Uh, I don't I don't know how you can reach a conclusion other than that, although I, I certainly respect the opinion. Well, we certainly have. I mean, Adolfo, you've been great coming on in the past with us and explaining things, and this one we are going to agree to completely disagree uh, on this matter, and, and certainly we, we can all do that and uh, and say goodbye and thank you for your time, but uh, I, I will completely think the NFL dropped the ball on this one. Well, one final thought, Adolfo, before I let you go. Do you have any information as to when the commissioner will publicly comment on this? I, I do not have that, uh, uh, but I, I am sure you will be among the first to know. Okay, well, thanks. tell him to call us. <laughs> Adolfo, thanks, thank Adolfo. you very much for the time this thank morning. You. Uh, again, we can agree to disagree, yep. and I think in this case mm -hmm. we clearly do, um, but we do uh, respect and, and appreciate him sure. taking the time to join us. Let's take a quick break. There's obviously a lot there to react to. We'll do it next on Mike and Mike.